What is the first moment in your life that you remember God answering a prayer? It doesn't matter how old you were, if you were a child, a teen, or an adult, but it was the first moment that God showed up in an incredible or unexpected way that God became real to you in your life. For me, it was when I was about five years old. Um, I had grown up learning about God, and my mom had taught me that if ever I need help, I can pray to God. I can ask, I can talk to God. So I had lost a toy, and that was a, a big issue for me as a five-year-old. So I remember as a five-year-old, I prayed to God and asked him to help me find this toy. As I was praying, I had an image that popped into my mind, and it was where this toy was in a box in my room that I hadn't looked in. So immediately I ran to the room, I opened up the lid, and there was the toy, exactly where I knew God had told me. And it was in that moment that God became real to me personally, that, wow, God heard my prayer, you know, about a toy. He cares about the little things. He cares about the little people, the, the children. He hears you, he sees you, and he loves you. This moment was paramount in my journey of faith and getting to know God as not just a, a impersonal being or as the God of a pastor or a church, but my heavenly Father who loved me and who cares for me and who hears me. You know, and as I learned this beautiful concept of how God cares about the small things, later on as a teenager, I learned another important concept about prayer, and that is faith and action. When I was 14 years old, I had recently bought mitzvah. We were attending a Messianic synagogue, and so I had learned to read Hebrew, to dance in Hebraic dancing. To uh, We had learned about the Sabbath and the festivals and how Yeshua is in all of the biblical feast days, all of these beautiful things that I learned in that season of my life, which I give thanks to the Lord for it. And I was going to have the honor, this is a few weeks later after the bat mitzvah, and I had the honor to go up to read from the Torah scroll in Hebrew and to sing the, the verses out in Hebrew. But as I sat there in the, my chair, as the servants went along, um, not too long before I was supposed to go up to read from the Torah scroll, I started to feel this massive amount of phlegm in my throat where I lost my voice and I couldn't speak. And it kind of scared me for a moment because like, what's happening? You know, I struggled to like breathe clearly. I went to go get water from the fountain and you know, it was, it was bad. I went back to my chair thinking, oh, maybe it'll go away. It didn't go away. Like, well, do I need to, do I need to like ask someone to do, to read the verses for me? What can I do? I, I can't, I can't talk right now. You know, it was, it was bad. But then I was reminded as I sat in the chair to have faith because what I was doing wasn't about me and it wasn't for me, it was for him. And if he wanted me to do this for his glory, he would enable me to do this. He would make all things possible if I simply asked him and I trusted in him. So as a 14 year old, I decided I'm going to pray and I'm going to trust that he's going to make it so I can speak <laughs> before I go up. So as I prayed, I get called up and I stand up still not being able to speak. My voice still clogged with phlegm. But as I walked forward down the aisle towards the front where the scroll was open, I began to feel my throat clear up and I swallowed and the phlegm went away. So as I stood before the scroll, I was able to sing the verses from that week's Torah portion clearly and fluently and it was in that moment, it was such a beautiful reminder again of not only how God hears our prayer, even about the small things, but how prayer, how faith also requires action. The thing is this, prayer and action go hand in hand. Even though I had prayed, I had lifted up my request in faith and in trust to God, God also was asking of me, to step forward in faith, to step out of the boat, so to say, as I stood up and as I'm walking down that aisle, that I'm literally 
putting myself on the altar saying, God, it's for you. <laughs> so it's on you, God, to carry me through this moment. And he did. Faith and action are so important that God sometimes only gives the, you could say, the, the response and the answer to our prayer when we also take responsibility, when we also step forward in faith, when we also, not just when we sit back on our couches and say, okay, God, when are you going to show up? When are you going to do the thing I've been asking you to do? It's when you go forth to do his will or to bring him glory, when you have action, when you step forward in faith, that God meets you there. In scripture, there is action in the waiting. You are busy about his business, and when you are being active in doing his will, doing things that glorify him, that's when he comes and actually answers our prayer. Sometimes in ways we don't expect, sometimes in ways we don't even realize, sometimes it takes a longer than we would have thought. But it is in being active in the waiting. It is saying, okay, God, I'm trusting you. I'm stepping out of the boat and I'm going to do and be busy in your work. And I give it to you. Another element of prayer that I learned in my faith walk is the one that is probably the most important. What do you do when God doesn't answer your prayer? When he's not giving you the answer, the relief, the, the healing, the whatever that you're asking for in that moment, what do you do then? But God had more to teach me in regards to prayer and trusting in him. And so as an adult later on in life, I am learning um, not just about his Torah, which is beautiful, his festivals and Sabbaths, but the Holy Spirit and to walk like Yeshua walked, to look at the life of Yeshua and to to pray for the sick and to to walk more in the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And as I'm learning these things and I'm hungering and I'm just eating it all up, like, you know, this is beautiful, this is amazing, I want this. God has something else he wanted to teach me. That sometimes God doesn't answer a prayer in the way we would hope or expect because he has something else in mind. One example of this was when I was at work. I used to work at a ministry, a, a, a global international ministry. And I was in the office one day and I was just struggling with like a massive amount of depression and like a headache and just feeling overwhelmed, stress, anxious. I was feeling awful, like I wanted to curl up under a blanket like a potato and do nothing, see no one, talk to no one, and it was just a bad sort of crummy day. But I was in the office, I could not do any of that, and I was stuck there. And I remember praying to God like, God, please take away this headache. I can't focus, I'm struggling to do my work, and I'm just feeling so overwhelmed and all of this stuff. And I am I, I did pray to God about this, and nothing happens, you know, I'm still feeling just as everything as I had been. But it was in that moment I got up, and, you know, I went to go use the restroom, stretch my legs, and, you know, get up away from my desk. And I met a lady who was just leaving <laughs> the restroom as I was walking in that direction. And I had the immediate thought that came to my mind as I saw her put her hands by her temple and kind of do like this. The immediate thought that came to mind was ask her what's wrong. So I did. You know, hey, how are you? You know, is everything okay? You know, anything wrong? Like, oh, she said, you know, like I have this horrible sinus headache. It's like so bad. I've had it all day. It's you know, it's hard for me to see because it's you know the pressure and the my eyes. Um, and I had been learning to walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit to, to pray for those who were sick and that God would bring healing. So in that moment, everything else I've been going through kind of just melted away as my focus was on this woman in front of me and the pain she was feeling in that moment and just a compassion and a love for her overwhelmed me so I prayed for her this was the first time I had ever stepped out and done this I had never because I had like I said been just learning about all these things I was excited but I had never actually yet prayed for anyone in this way I had never prayed for someone to be healed yet um, I desired it but I had never seen it yet I prayed over this woman and she looked at me in shock and surprise as she feels her forehead and her temple. And she's like, the sinus headache, it's gone. 
it's it's gone you know she's like you know stretching her jaws and like it's i don't feel anything anymore the pain is gone and it was just like wow glory to god that's amazing you know god is so good um, and she was just so like grateful and thank we're both thanking god together and she goes away down the hall and you know just funny because she sees another lady coming down the hall and she's excitedly telling that lady oh you know she prayed for me and now my headache is gone you know glory to god and <laughs> telling everyone she met how i prayed for her and god healed her um but anyways it was funny because you know as she gave glory to god telling everyone this testimony i didn't feel depressed anymore i didn't feel anxious or stressed and even or you know my headache i didn't even feel my headache anymore it was gone and it was like, wow, you know, if I hadn't gotten up in that moment, cause I just needed to stretch my legs. I needed to get away from my desk. I was feeling just so like, ugh, of my own stuff that was going on, which was real. That prompted me to move in a direction that allowed me to cross paths with someone God wanted to touch. And in that moment, God wanted to heal as a testimony of his love for her and also his love for me. Because it's funny the way prayer works. When you pray for someone else, oftentimes, God, <laughs> you feel more blessed at the end of it than even the person you prayed for, you know, it does. Just because that overwhelming, like, wow, God, that you used me to touch someone. And I, 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 I it's, it's a beautiful thing to be used by God. When it's not about you, it's just about seeing his heart seeing his love for someone else and being a vessel in his hand but that was another element of prayer that god wanted to teach me that what if he doesn't answer a prayer request now this might seem like he didn't it's a small prayer request it's a minor thing that i had asked of god but he didn't answer my prayer request because he had a greater purpose at work to use my struggle in a sense to actually bring blessing to someone else uh, and because of my struggle, it put me in a place where I would cross paths with someone that I could now show God's love to. And through that, God would bless us both as happened in this instance. And while these stories that I've shared are unique to me and to my testimony, we each have stories of how God has come through how god has done something unexpected or amazing in our lives but also those moments when what gives you know god didn't answer a prayer but maybe he showed up in a different way in a different time or maybe we're still waiting on that answer to our prayer maybe it's that moment of god where are you you know what what gives what's going on and i just want to encourage you that in every moment of life God has promised us in his word that he hears us, he sees us, and he has never forsaken us, nor will he ever forsake us. But will we trust in him? Will we put and keep our eyes on him, no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what's going on around us? And like I learned, he cares about the small things. Faith and action go hand in hand. And if a prayer isn't answered right away or doesn't seem to be answered at all. What is God doing? And is he allowing that for a greater purpose to reach or to bless others, even through a struggle that you might be experiencing? And to look for those opportunities in those moments. God, I'm going through this right now. But how can I be a blessing to others? God, I know you hear me and you see me and you care and you love for me. And perhaps the answer to your prayer is by sharing that same love that he has for you with others, even though you're in a moment of trial. And the last thing, of course, we can learn about prayer is that God's answer to our prayer isn't always yes. Sometimes it's no. And that's a good thing. <laughs> Why? because in the end we want to be in God's will. And if God closes a door or says no, that is the best thing. And even though it might be hard to see in that moment, God does have a purpose for all things because he is above all things and he works through all things for good when we trust in him. So I just wanna encourage you today to seek him and to spend time with him 
in your prayer closet, and to also walk out these principles in your family, with your children, that God cares about the small things, that God asks us to be, to step forward and to walk out in faith, to step out in action in our trust and in our faith, and also to be a light to others in the midst of our circumstances. That even if it sounds and looks like he's not answering a prayer, there is possibly something greater at work and to simply trust in him. I hope this video blessed you. Blessings and shalom.